All right, we're back. So now we want to talk about the different properties and how this affects how we use the electromagnetic spectrum. This is really interesting stuff. Um, let's get into it. All right. So by the end of this, you should be able to explain why we use it instead of a physical link and relate the properties of the EMS that make it useful. Okay. So let's do a little bit of history. The transatlantic cable. Uh, it used to be a long, long time ago that if you wanted to get a message from, well, essentially um, England to the United States of America, there would be lots of little ships, and they had a relay system, and it would take it would take roughly uh, ten to fifteen days to get a message from one end to the next, and that was to get it. That was basically to get to pass the message from ship to ship to ship to ship to ship to ship along. Well, there's some very clever people uh, created the transatlantic cable or the Anglo-American cable, which went from the United States to the UK. And instead of taking instead of taking um, ten to fifteen days to get a message across once the transatlantic cable was laid, and as you can see, there was actually four uh, backwards and forwards. What they were able to do was to send a message across in about three minutes, ten minutes, something like that. So that's a much, much more efficient system. Turns out, it's not the most efficient way we have. So often, transform uh, information systems re rely on a physical link. And this is um, often an advantage if you can have that. It's, it's, it's more stable. Um, you can easily diagnose a problem. You can see if it's not connected. You can see if it's shorted out. But sometimes the physical links aren't possible. Now, this could be either because it's geographically so too far away or economically just way too expensive. Cable's expensive. Um, we can still achieve communication using electromagnetic waves. That's cool. So they carry information in the form of a code to be transferred from one place to another via both a transmitting antenna and a receiving antenna. All right, so the transmitting antenna, it produces the wave and it sends out at great speed, which is the speed of light, which is pretty cool. So it's, that is 300 million um, meters per second or three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And you can do it over several meters, which you'll never notice the, how fast it is or thousands of kilometers, which might have a, well, will have a lag, but you can see it. So it works really well. So receiving antenna, basically they're tuned to specific frequencies. So they pick the signal they want out and ignore all the rest because the sun is pumping out this type of radiation constantly, as well as all other thoughts, uh, forms. So there are several problems we're gonna look at. First, we're gonna look at speed. Basically, as we said, it's at 300 million meters per second or three times 10 to the eight. Therefore, the high speed of it means that the time between sending, receiving, and decoding a signal is almost instantaneous. It's really, really fast. All right. And it, it says Earth-based systems. So that means it's still fast if it has to go to space, but not quite as fast. Um, it travels in a straight line. This is really useful. So basically, yeah, electromagnetic wa magnetic waves travel in a straight line. And when we say a straight line, what we actually mean is they, as they're pumped out by the parabolic reflector, they don't just travel in a straight line. They sort of propagate out. But you can go from point A to point B. Now, this means it's really predictable. And that's important. Um, even when it bends... It's called refraction, so it goes from one medium to the next. It's still predictable. We, we know which way it's going to bend and exactly to what angle it will bend. So predictability is really, really important. Uh, reflection. This is really, really useful. We can actually use... So we've got our straight line, right? This is our surface wave. We call this a ground wave, and that covers, boom, straight down. Um, then we've got a space wave. Well, actually, that's... 
Yeah, so space wave is able to go into space or straight across. And then we've got the sky wave. The sky wave actually bounces off this ionosphere, which is a plasma medium. So that's different to air. Now, because it bounces off there, that means we can actually send it around the world. All right, so I'm shooting, jumping ahead. Reflection uh, is basically the change in direction, so boom, boom, as it bounces off between the two different mediums. Now, yeah, and this can include a plasma. So we use this for shortwave AM radio frequencies. Uh, so we can deliberately bounce them off the ionosphere, which is a plasma. Unfortunately, this also means scattering occurs. So when the shorter wavelengths strike, strike an object like water in the in the atmosphere or, or anything really, they scatter and this dilutes the signal, it weakens the signal. Uh, it's similar to absorption. All right, so refraction is the way it changes. We can use that. Uh, we can use it to slow waves down or we can use it to bend them. Absorption is when it passes through a medium and it loses its intensity. So as sound passes through a wall from the air, it loses that intensity, it gets absorbed, um, or uh, light, again, black absorbs most of it, a black object absorbs most light. Uh, wave intensity is the strength, so the, the amplitude, so the higher the amplitude, the, the more intense it is, and the further it will go, because that's a re relation to the power or the energy of the wave. Um, that's unfortunate. There we go, we're back. So, we just move the table across. I would just quickly knock down this table as basically talking about how we use different frequencies due to different properties that it relates it, relates the, um, the different types of EMS to their properties. All right, so you've got to choose, particularly when we're setting long distances, we're going to choose the correct wave band. We have ground waves, sky waves which bounce off the ionosphere ground waves go from the signal down to the ground um, so that's short distance sky waves yeah longer distance then we've got space waves which we set up into space and then back down to earth at a different point so we want you to have a quick look at summarize basically on page 140 to 141 um, which ones are most appropriate for which purpose and why all right enjoy